Welcome back. Today I am going to give you a quick recap for a movie named, The Black Demon. The movie begins by introducing the stories of the mythical shark that lives off the Baja coast. The gigantic megalodon shark has affected the sanity of several fishermen, and it was known by the name of El Demonio Negro by the locals of the town. The legends also say that it only comes when summoned. There are people on ships moving towards the Baja coast at night. One man named Nacho dives into the water with his oxygen kit to set a timer bomb inside the water, and another man is sitting on a ship, waiting for him to come back. They are in contact through communication devices. Suddenly, something attacks Nacho and kills him. The water is filled with blood. The man on the ship senses something strange, he tries to contact Nacho but fails. The ship starts moving and scares the man on the boat. Suddenly, a huge monster like a shark appears with his big teeth from the water and kills him. Paul Sturges, along with his wife, Ayers, daughter, Audrey, and son, Tommy, is traveling to the Baja Peninsula on a work vacation. Paul is a proud employee at Nixon Oil. His son asks him about pirate ships in the sea on their way to the hotel because he is happy to see pirates. He is wearing a pirate patch on his face. Paul is happy for this opportunity provided by the Nixon Oil Company because it will give him financial benefits. They stopped by the side of the water and took some pictures. He heads the security division and was on his way to check the conditions on the El Diamante oil rig. He hoped to revitalize the rig instead of decommissioning it. After arriving at Costa Azul, Paul and Ayers are surprised that the hotel has been shut down. The situation of the hotel is also very bad. The town looks vacant in general, the shops and restaurants are closed. People in their gaze at Paul and his family suspiciously. Paul interacts with a few strangers, but they are not as welcoming as they could be. He meets one person, El Rey, who asks him the reason for coming here because families do not come here on vacation for a week. When Paul mentions that he works for Nixon Oil and the company is accountable for building the place, the strangers become furious. He indirectly blames Nixon Oil for the damage to the place. Ayers alleviates the situation and interrupts their discussion. She offers him money to show them the nearest restaurant or coffee shop. While walking to the eatery, they notice how deserted the town is. There is a dark secret that the town is hiding because everyone has a strange look on their face. There is a statue of their god everywhere for protection from evil. Paul asks El Rey about protection and they tell him about the demon. Tommy gives his pirate patch to El Rey. When they arrived at the food hut, Paul receives a call from a company that wants to get the inspection of the oil rig done immediately. Paul decides to start working on it and asks Ayers to find a decent hotel for them. Audrey tries to stop him because he is getting bored in this place. Even though Ayers does not feel safe, she agrees to it, thinking it is only a matter of a few hours. Paul gives money to the hotel receptionist to keep an eye on his family. Paul goes to find the boat and meets the guard there. He asks him to inform Rig about him, and the guard says okay, but when Paul leaves, he does not call anyone. Paul locates the boat that is assigned to take him to the rig. He meets Chaco the boatman, and he asks him about the current situation of town because there are no ships, no fishermen, and people around that area have also disappeared. Chaco states that El Diamante has woken up the demon, which is why most of the villagers either flee or die. Paul ignores the strange theory and laughs at it. After traveling halfway, Chocolatito refuses to go any further, declaring that he can feel bad vibes. Paul offers him money, but he refuses. He offers Paul to travel in a different motorboat he has maintained and also tells him to talk through the radio. Paul travels to the oil rig alone and is shocked to see no one around. The water near the rig is red, and there are some masks in the water. Meanwhile, Ayers, Tommy, and Audrey enjoy the sea view from the hut. Tommy searches for all the information about their god on the internet. Ayers is getting bad vibes and wants to go back as soon as possible. Soon, a few men gather and start to harass Ayers and Audrey. Ines knocks one of the men in the head with a glass bottle and walks away from the shack. They go to their car, but the tire is broken. The men continue to pursue them to take revenge. Ayers is left with no other options, so she pays a fisherman to take them to the oil rig. While they manage to avoid one major threat, 
they are immediately confronted with the next problem. However, the instant Paul arrives at the oil rig and finds it empty, he starts questioning his judgments. He calls the names of the workers there, but no one replies. Paul finds a little dog at the rig, and immediately two men attempt to attack him. They do not expect someone from the company to visit them. They tell him that the radio is broken and they do not know about anyone visiting from the company. When Paul explains who he is and that he is here for inspection, they leave him. They hear the sound of the boat and go outside, where he finds out that his family is on the boat. Chato and Junior gradually explain what went wrong with El Diamante. Meanwhile, Ayers and her children sense a strange presence as they approach the rig. When Audrey touches the water, her palm is covered in oil. Chato and Junior notice the megalodon shark going around the boat. Ayers and the kids are in the boat, and they try to distract El Demonio by making noises. They also start firing at the shark. They start panicking when they notice Paul's boat going down. Ayers, Audrey, and Tommy safely reach the rig, but suddenly Audrey falls into the water. She sees dead bodies in the water and screams. The demon shark was about to attack her when Paul pulled her from the water. She tries to explain to them about dead bodies, but everyone relaxes her. While returning to the town, the fisherman who brought Ayers and her children to the rig is attacked and consumed by the colossal megalodon. Paul and Ayers are shocked after watching this. Chato explains everything to them, from the beginning to the end. Paul and his family now know what they are dealing with. Paul is not only accountable for revitalizing the rig but also for protecting his family from the creature. Ayers makes tea for her children and tries to calm them down because they are afraid of all this. Paul asks Chato about the rest of the crew, and he reveals that some lucky team members escape while the rest are killed. He and his son decide to stay. Ayers tries to connect to the mobile, but there is no service. Chato adds that the radio on the rig does not process, and the calls previously made to the company go unanswered. Nixon Oil knows about the rampant spillage but never solves it. Ayers feels bad for the death of the poor boatman because she was the one who paid him for coming here, but Paul relaxes her by telling her it's not her fault. Audrey and Tommy introduce themselves with the dog, Toro. Suddenly the rig starts moving because Shark hits the rig, which scares everyone. Paul goes with the other two members to check everything in the rig to find any solution, but nothing works. They decide to go down in the water to fix the problem, but Ayers does not allow them. Later, Ayers discovers the safety reports and notices that the warning given to the company about the situation here was ignored, and Paul signs those documents. She finds out that her husband knew about the deteriorating conditions of the oil rig all along, but he chose to hide it from them because the company is paying him a very huge amount. Oil companies like Nixon Oil have developed self-inspection procedures to get away with everything. Paul remembers that it was a complete failure the first time he tried Diamante. He listed all the hazards and problems he noticed in his first report. The following day, he was threatened by the company. When she speaks with Paul, he confesses his mistakes and adds that he did what he did to give his family a better life. His job would be jeopardized if he did not act in the best interests of the company. He is forced to sign the reports in some ways, and he regrets losing his moral conscience during that time. Paul learned to work solely in the interests of the company from that day forward, even if it meant lying in the reports because he was unwilling to lose his well-paying job. Chato and Junior prepare to make an underwater run to bring back the power, and while doing so, they discuss the myth around El Demonio. When the oil rig was established, the people of Bahia Azul were hopeful about the future. Jobs were promised, and people aspired for a better standard of living. Things looked good initially, but gradually the company started to overlook the regulatory standards, and everything took a turn for the worse. Chato tells them that El Demonio is not just a megalodon, Chato considers the creature a curse. According to him, the god of rain, Tlaloc, is considered the giver of life, and his tears make up the oceans, the rivers, and the lakes. When people take more than they need, Tlaloc punishes them. Chato believes that El Demonio is not just a creature but an attachment to the old gods. The ocean is always unclean, and Tlaloc is not happy about it. El Demonio is sent to teach humanity a lesson. The ones who experience the creature have vivid imaginations that God wants them to have. 
Audrey sees dismembered bodies all around her when she falls into the water. According to Chato, this is God's way of holding humans accountable for their mistakes. Meanwhile, Paul notices an underwater timer bomb connected to the leg of the rig. He realizes that Nixon Oil is planting the bomb to murder him while he is at the rig. The batteries used in the bomb are the ones the company uses for underwater destruction. Paul cannot help but laugh at the situation he is in. He thinks the seniors in his company, whom he has tried to please all these years, are plotting to kill him. Meanwhile, the oil spill is out of control, the rig is nearly unusable, and it will all be reported sooner or later. They needed someone to blame for all this, and Paul is the perfect candidate. They have his signature on every security statement, and they intended to use it to state that his negligence resulted in the spill. Paul is determined to right his wrongs, and he comes up with a solution which can save his family. He agrees to stop the leak by using the repair valves and bombs in El Demonio to end the torment. Even though it is risky, Paul knows there is no other option. Meanwhile, Audrey and Tommy devise a strategy to construct a raft that they can use. Paul is getting ready to dive underwater to protect his family. Before leaving, the family and Chato pray together, hoping that Tlaloc will forgive them and allow them to flee safely. Chato, Ayers, Audrey, and Tommy board the makeshift raft while Paul works on his plan. Paul goes halfway through his strategy but has to devise an alternative after the black demon attacks him. The bomb is beating, and he does not have much time. Paul under the water contacts his family and says his last goodbyes. Paul wishes that Chato and the town's inhabitants will use the documents he left behind to follow justice and hold Nixon Oil responsible for the harm they caused to so many people. He leaves his watch for Tommy, who has always dreamed of becoming a pirate. With the bomb attached to his body, Paul is eaten up by El Demonio, and just as the bomb ticks, the creature is destroyed. His wife and children watched the bomb blow up from a distance. The truth that Paul is no longer alive starts to set in, and even though the danger is gone, losing him is almost painful. The rig fell down after the bombing and disappeared in the water. The family notices a motorboat coming towards them. El Rey and Chaco help the family get on board. Ayers comforts her son and daughter about the death of their father. Tommy throws his locket in the sea. As the family travels to the shore, it starts to rain. In the end, a small wooden boat consisting of five small wooden figures is shown, but suddenly that wooden boat drowned in the ocean. The same wooden boat Tommy earlier floats on the sea and asks forgiveness from Tlaloc's wrath for bringing the black demon, a megalodon, into the ocean. Thank you for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe.